Jai Gurudev. Mm, Jai Masters. They say your mind creates your universe. It is true and not true. The universe exists. It was here way before you, so your mind did not create it. But your mind does create your experience of the universe. That is so important to realize. The world is out there. It comes in through your senses, but you don't experience it that way. It first has to pass through the filter of your mind. Whatever your mind thinks about it, it likes it, it doesn't like it, it's afraid of it, it's concerned about it, it's what it wants, it what it does, etc., etc. So what comes in doesn't make it back to you, the consciousness, the awareness of being, until it is passed through the layer of mind. And mind and emotions are very, very closely tied together. They're not the same thing, but the distinction is almost meaningless until you've really grown a great deal. The difference is your mind creates thoughts. Your heart creates emotions. These are different things. You don't feel your thoughts. You are aware of your thoughts. They talk to you. You can see them if they visualize if you dreams and stuff. You see. You see and hear your thoughts. Your thoughts talk to you. I don't like this. Oh my God, I don't want to go there. No, I don't like it. There, it's talking to you. So it talks to you. That is a thought expressing itself so that your consciousness experiences it. Just like a person talks to you, they express themselves, so your consciousness experiences it. But you don't experience what the person says. It comes in through your ears. It then makes it into your thought area, your mind, the mental area, and your mind creates thoughts about it, and you listen to the combination, if you're lucky, the combination of what the person has said and what your thoughts say about what the person has said. That's everything. That's all you need to know. That's everything. You can learn all the spiritual techniques and all the things you want. You're not going anywhere until you understand that that's what this is about. It is about the fact that you are in there and you have a mind in there that creates thoughts. And likewise, you have a heart in there. It doesn't create thoughts. It doesn't talk to you. It feels. It emanates vibrations. And you feel the vibrations. That's why you say, I feel lonely. You may have thoughts about what to do about it. You may have thoughts about why you feel lonely, but you feel lonely. You feel scared. You feel love. You feel things. Just like if there was a vibration in this room, it doesn't have to speak. It doesn't have to form visualization. You feel it. The earth shakes you. You feel the vibration. Instruments, we feel them. You can feel the vibration. Yes, you hear it through your ears, but you actually can feel the vibration. Likewise, your heart, not your physical heart, your spiritual heart, emanates vibrations, and you, the consciousness, feel them. So you are in there, and you experience thoughts, and you experience feelings inside. You experience emotions inside. Feelings, emotions, same thing. So the world, when it comes in, doesn't make it to you. It makes it to stimulating your thoughts and your emotions, and then you experience a combination, if you're lucky, a lot of times you don't even experience what actually happened, you're too busy experiencing your reaction to what happened. Somebody says something, before they're even finished, you feel anger. Now you're just about anger. You didn't even finish letting them say what they were saying. They just said, just kidding. But you didn't hear that, <laughs> right? Because you weren't listening. You were listening to what was going on inside of you. I'm telling you, that is the foundation of spirituality. I don't care what you're doing or what you believe, if you don't pay attention to that, to the fact that you are conscious and you are in there and there are thoughts in there and there are feelings in there, that that's what's going on and that your thoughts and your feelings are what determine the quality of your life, not what is happening outside. I'll repeat that. Your thoughts and your feelings are what determine the quality of your life, not what is happening outside. If something is happening outside and it makes you think and feel nice things, then you have a nice quality of life. If the exact same thing is happening outside and it freaks you out, then you don't have a nice quality of life. The exact same thing's happening. The exact same thing can happen in front of different people. They feel different things. They think different things. The exact same thing can happen in front of you and you feel or think something different than you did yesterday. But the exact same thing, like a person. If something happened in between that left an impression inside of you and now when the person shows up, you start feeling yicky feelings then you're not having the same experience you did yesterday when you got all lovey-dovey 
before you found out what he did, <laughs> right? whatever it is. No, it is your reaction. It is your thoughts and emotions that go on inside that determine how you are doing. When somebody asks, how are you doing? They're asking you in there, how are you doing about what's going on out here? So you have to wake up and realize that that's what's happening. You're conscious, you're in there. And one thing you're conscious of is these thoughts that are being created and these emotions that are being emanated. And then you experience those. The problem is you're not paying attention to that. Nobody except a yogi, someone who's serious in their growth, pays attention to that. They don't pay attention to that. They pay attention to the following. What you said made me feel bad. Therefore, you're bad. That looks like something that would make me happy. Therefore, I want it. Very logical, isn't it? No, it's not. It's absurd. You are trying to say, I have these thoughts and these feelings inside of me. They determine how I'm doing. Of course they do, all right? That's what I'm thinking. If I'm thinking nice things, I feel nice. If I'm thinking yucky things, I feel yucky, period. Same thing with your emotions. So they are determining how I'm doing. I don't know anything about these things. No one ever talked to me the way Mickey does. I just have always had these thoughts and emotions. My parents didn't talk to me about them other than shut up, behave. There wasn't anything. And basically, I'm stuck in here with myself. I'm stuck in here experiencing whatever my thoughts and emotions are. And that's what's determining how I'm doing. And I'm very moody. What does that mean? My thoughts and emotions change all the time. One time they were really happy and they were wonderful. Then you said something and all of a sudden I got quiet and weird. It is your thoughts and your emotions that are determining how you are doing in there. But you don't know how to deal with your thoughts and your emotions. Nobody even told you you could. As far as you know, the only way you can change your thoughts and your emotions is to change what's happening to you outside. If so-and-so says something nice to me, my thoughts and emotions are nice. If so-and-so says something mean to me, my thoughts and emotions are mean. Therefore, in order to have nice thoughts and nice emotions, I need to get him to be nice and her to stay away from me. And I am now going to devote my entire life, not to my thoughts and emotions and what to do about them. I'm going to devote my entire life to attempting to manipulate all you guys so you behave in a way that when it comes into me, it makes my thoughts and emotions feel good. That almost makes me cry to say that people do that. No, people don't do that. Everybody does that. That's what they're all doing. <laughs> they're all they're trying to figure out. You ever have trouble making a decision? Because you can't figure out what you want that will make you feel good. Should I buy this dress or shirt or something like that? You turn around, you look in the mirror. What are you doing? You're trying to see what effect it has on your thoughts and emotions. You know what it looks like already before you put it on. You can tell what size it is. Just look at the size. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with when I put it on, does all of a sudden my mind say, oh, this makes me look thin. I like this. This is really good. I remember what somebody wore something like this, right? She was very popular in high school. This reminds me of that. I'm, gonna, I'm getting this. <laughs> you didn't buy the blouse or the shirt or the pants. You bought the thoughts and emotions. If you then buy it and you put it in your closet and the next day it says, God, why did I buy that? I don't want to wear that. Then you don't wear it and you don't like it. You know what I just said is true. So basically what people end up doing because they don't understand their thoughts and their emotions, they don't understand where they come from, they don't understand why they say what they say, they just do what they tell them to do. They're just like addicted to them. So therefore, because I have no control over my thoughts and emotions, but they are determining the quality of my life, what I need to do is to manipulate and control the moments that are unfolding in front of me so they make my thoughts and emotions feel okay. Anywhere from feel really good to at least not feel bad. And now I'm anxious. I'm uptight. I'm not doing well. Why? Because I'm afraid that something's going to happen that will bother me. I'm afraid that something won't happen that would have made me feel good. And so I walk around anxious. I walk around angst out. You know anything about that? I stress. What is stress? I don't understand. What is stress? The world is unfolding. The sun is coming up. You're stressed out about it. It comes up every morning. It's been doing it for five billion years. All kinds of things are going on. The moon goes through its phases. The seasons come and go. I hope you're not stressed out about them. You have trillions of cells within your body. They do what they're supposed to do, pretty much. Believe me, 99.99999% of the time, they're doing what they're supposed to do. You're stressed out about whether they're meiosis being correctly or whatever it is, mitosis thing, right? And the answer is no. 
you're letting the entire universe unfold with no stress. You're stressed out about Saturn's rings? All kinds of things are going on. You're not stressed out about them at all. Well, then why are you stressed? If you are not stressed by 99.9999999999% of all that goes on in the universe, why are you stressed by the point oh 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 one that's passing in front of you? One of the answer is because it bothered your mind and the other ones didn't. That's the reason. It is your mind that is doing this. It is creating the anxiety. It is creating the stress. It is creating every problem you ever had. I'm going to make a statement to you. You're not going to like this. There are no problems. There are no problems. Never have been, never will be. There are just events unfolding in the universe, very few of which unfold in front of you. Because I'm telling you, the ones that aren't unfolding in front of you, you don't call them a problem. The problem is you. The problem is that your mind says, I don't like that they're sitting that close together. You don't even know them. I don't care. Your mind just says stuff, doesn't it? I don't like how he's driving in front of me. I'm in a rush. He's going slower than the speed limit. What can I do? Your mind is bothering you about something. There's not something wrong. There's just something happening. Every single place in creation for 13.8 billion years, there has been something happening. Is that okay with you? How then is it that the tiny, tiny moment that is part of the 13.8 billion years in the whole universe that's in front of you at any given moment bothers the hell out of you? And the answer is because there's something wrong with you. (laughs) It is your mind. It is not the events that are doing this. The universe is just unfolding. But because your thoughts and your emotions react to what comes in through your senses, and they very often react in a negative, disturbed way, you're disturbed. And you then double the disturbing, and that double exponential the disturbing, by doing what? Okay, I'm disturbed, but I don't want to be disturbed. How do I manipulate and control the moments that are going to unfold in front of me from now on so they don't disturb me? And I'm telling you, that's more disturbing than what disturbed you. Because what disturbed you is only happening for a moment. It's this moment in front of you. If you let your mind get involved, it could bother you for the rest of your life. You could worry about what's going to happen when you get older, much older, 64. Like the Beatles, will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Well, they were 19 when they sang that song. So if you let your mind do it, it'll create a problem that's not there. Anybody notice that? Anybody notice that sometimes it creates problems that never happen? but it worried about them anyways. It's just so funny, I can't even talk about it. Do you know that some people's minds, and that's like a joke in quotes, some people's minds actually bother them about stuff that already happened and is done? <laughs> that's pretty weird. It's bad enough, it's bothering you what's happening. It's none of your business. It's just happening in front of you, or it just happens to be in front of you. And okay, you worry about what might happen. Okay, I can at least understand that. I can't understand if it already happened 10 years ago, how it can still be bothering you because it's not even happening. You literally have things bother you that happened years ago that will never happen again. Your mother's dead. You know, you didn't get along with someone, she's gone. But no, you keep reliving the arguments, you keep worrying about what it was, blah, blah, blah. You let the past haunt you and bother you in your mind. That is not the world doing that. The past is not repeating itself. So you wake up and you realize there's a problem here. Houston, there's a problem. And the problem is inside my own head. And so the thoughts and the emotions are very important. They are the essence of spirituality. If you are not working with your thoughts and emotions, you are not growing spiritually. I don't care how many books you read. I don't care whether you go to Nepal or what you do or sit at the feet of all the gurus in the whole world. I mean nothing. If you're not working with your thoughts and your emotions, I'm telling you, then you're caught in your thoughts and emotions. And that's where you're staying. So basically, you wake up and you realize the most basic truth that exists. I am in here, and my mind creates thoughts, and my heart creates emotions. I should just send you home. Wake up to that. I'm going to repeat that. I am in here, and my mind creates thoughts, and my heart creates emotions. Okay, fine. That's the truth, isn't it? Are you okay with that? You better say no, because you're not. You are not okay 
with the vast majority of thoughts and emotions that your mind and your heart create. Do you know that? Do you see that? You know how I know you're not okay with them? Because you have to do something about them. He sits there and says, where is she? I wonder where she is. She said she was going to call by now. Okay, that's a thought. How are you doing with that thought? No. No, 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 no. I don't want to have that thought. That's not a nice thought. I'm not okay with that. Your mind created a thought. It's just a thought. But you're not okay with it. So you need to do something about it to neutralize it, to try to make it more comfortable. You have to call to see maybe where she is. You know, like five minutes. She was supposed to call you five minutes ago and you're freaking out. You're not okay with the thoughts. And generally, you're not okay with your emotions. I don't feel comfortable here. I see that people are talking to somebody else. They're not talking to me. Or maybe they're talking about me. And all this stuff is getting created. And therefore, you get very busy inside. It's called an autoimmune disease. If you're allergic to yourself, if you're not okay, forget that you're not okay with her thoughts or his thoughts. You're not okay with your own thoughts. And they're inside of you. And they're there when you go to bed. That's why you can't fall asleep. They're there when you're driving. They're there all the time, aren't they? All the time your mind is creating thoughts and all the time your heart is creating emotions. You better get comfortable with that. That's spirituality. Spirituality in the end says as follows. I'm in here and my mind creates thoughts and my heart creates emotions. <gasps> oh, I've been there, so done that. <laughs> the sun comes up, the sun goes down. Sometimes it rains, sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. So what else? What's new? In other words, it doesn't bother you. It's just what is. The mind creates thoughts, the heart creates emotions. If you can get comfortable with that, then it doesn't bother you. What do you mean? If something happens outside and it disturbs your thoughts and your emotions, it does not disturb you. You're the one who noticed that I'm in here. The mind got weird. The emotions got weird. I don't care. They've done it before. They just come and go. (laughs) I don't have to do anything about it. Somebody's supposed to call me. They didn't call for five minutes. Been there before. He creates a tizzy fit. Well, I'm just going to play cards and keep myself busy and have fun. And he wants to be a tizzy guy, he can be a tizzy fit guy. <laughs> all right? You just literally learn to be, that's what Christ meant by the peace that passes all understanding. The peace that you get that's understandable, you got what you wanted, you didn't have to get what you didn't want, it's understandable. The peace that you feel when it, your mind is disturbed by something or your heart is disturbed by something, that you still feel peace, why can't you feel peace? You're the one in there noticing, my heart hurts, Okay. Anybody know about that? Your heart can hurt? Do you know your heart can hurt? Have you noticed that? All right. So what? So what? So the heart hurts. My finger hurts. So what? It's exactly the same. Yeah, I I stubbed my toe. What are you going to do? Nothing. It hurts. So? Go to work. Go to school. Like, so what? So your heart hurts. So what? It'll come and go. It's never stayed, has it? (laughs) It's always come and went. I am telling you, that is a spiritual state. The spiritual state isn't controlling the mind so it only says nice things. The spiritual state is not controlling the heart so it never hurts. The spiritual state is that you are no longer attached to and addicted to the thoughts your mind is creating or the emotions that are coming out of your heart. You are a liberated being. You are free to allow the world to unfold in front of you, to allow the thoughts and emotions to do whatever they got to do, and we'll talk about that in a minute, why they do what they do, but you're fine. You just know, it's a Buddhist, it's coming and going, it just all passes in time, it all passes in time. She said something, and then she left, I felt uncomfortable, and you know, she always comes back, and you're okay. Wouldn't you like to always be okay? Wouldn't you like to always be okay? That's what I want for you. From the moment you wake up in the morning to you go to bed at night, every single day, you're fine. And I mean really fine. And you know you will always be fine. And you know that no matter what happens outside, you will be fine. That'd be pretty good. You can start to have fun with life. Why? Because you don't need it to be a certain way. Because you're okay. You can play with it the way it is. You can have fun. If it's rainy, have fun with the rain. If it's dry, have fun with the dry. If you're in a relationship, have fun with the relationship. If you're not, have fun being alone. Just have fun. Enjoy the experience of your life. People can't do that. The reason you can't do that is because you can't handle your thoughts and emotions. Not because of what the world's doing. 
but the world makes thoughts and emotions happen inside of you, or at least that's what happens, and then you can't handle those, so now you're freaking out. And so now you need to do something about manipulating the world and controlling people, places, and things so it doesn't make your thoughts and emotions be bad because you don't know how to handle them. Now you will go out there and your entire life will be a fight. Your entire life is a struggle. You're sitting in this little planet, spinning in the middle of absolutely nowhere, in the middle of dark, empty space, freaking out. <laughs> it's just so funny. Instead of enjoying the experience, you've dropped down onto this amazing planet. You must admit it's amazing. Mars is nothing like this. Saturn, Jupiter, none of them, right? Here there's trees and animals and giraffes and elephants. It's really weird. Fish, right? It's a weird place. There's lots of stuff going on. And you drop down onto the planet. You'll be here for a few years, and then you'll leave. Have fun. No, I can't. I know you can't. But I'm telling you why you can't. And then I'll tell you what to do about it. It's not that you can't because of what's happening in this planet. It's an amazing planet. It's entertaining, challenging, beautiful, everything at once. The problem is that when it comes inside of you, it causes thoughts and emotions to be created inside of you that you're not comfortable with. And because you're not comfortable with yourself, you're not comfortable with life. If you were comfortable with yourself, you'd be comfortable with life. You have to understand that relationship. Life is not doing anything but being what it is. Everything is what it is. It's the result of everything that ever happened and caused it to be the way it is. It's not right or wrong. It's not good or bad. It's the result of all that ever happened is making it be the way it is. You look the way you look because your genetics, your parents' genetics, every moment that's unfolding is the result of all the moments that came before it. It is a system of cause and effect that has nothing to do with right and wrong. It has to do with reality. It has to do with understanding the forces that cause things to be the way they are. All right. So the world is unfolding. It is coming into you, but it is causing your thoughts and emotions to do different things, and you can't handle that. It's just that simple. So it comes down to understanding and looking at and working with your relationship with your thoughts and your relationship with your emotions, not your relationship with the world. If you can work with your thoughts and your emotions, you will be at peace with the world. Now you can come out and deal with it. You can help people. You can help things. But if you're disturbed, you can't help anybody. If something that happened, no matter how bad it is, disturbs you, you're of no use. It is not true that anger is a good motivator or that hatred is a good motivator. They're terrible motivators. Terrible under all circumstances. If you are in an airport and you see somebody abusing a child and it freaks you out and you go yell and scream and carry on over there, you are a problem. There was a problem, now there's two problems. That was a problem, now you're a problem. And God knows you can get arrested or have the kid taken away from the parent. You didn't even understand what was going on. Like, you just don't even know what you're doing, right? Because you lost it. Whereas if you can handle it, as terrible as the situation is, okay, this happens. You know, this is part, there are reasons this is happening. I'm at peace with this. Now you can deal with it. Now I want you in that situation. You know, that's what the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. So if you can handle reality, you are a solution. You are a beautiful being. Now I put you in a situation. You're calm. You're centered. You're clean. You can deal with that situation and help raise it and carry it up. So keep remember that's true of your family relationships, your society relationships, the world relationship, everything. If you can't handle yourself, you are of no use you're part of the problem, not part of the solution. All right. So spirituality and yoga are not about what you're doing outside or not about what's happening outside. They're about can you handle what is going on inside of you. It is not about changing everybody else. I like to tell people, you have to prove that a human being is capable of raising above their inability to handle the thoughts and emotions. Once you've proved it within yourself, now you have a right to deal with other people. But if you can't handle that they can't handle it, you're just as bad. So your work is with yourself. And so how do you do this? We've been told we laid the groundwork. How do you do this? Can you do this? First of all, let's get this straight. Am I capable of being at peace within myself? Yes. If you can handle yourself and be calm within yourself, then you've succeeded. Well, why would you not be able to? Because I haven't learned how to. It's really that simple. If my mind says, I don't like that, it's almost as if I said I don't like it. No, my mind created a thought that said, I don't like that. I can't handle this. You're not making that thought. Your mind is making that thought. 
You're the person who's hearing the mind make that thought. You're the consciousness inside who's aware that your mind creates thoughts, and some of them are not comfortable, or that your heart hurts. I gave that one to you. You're the one who's aware that your heart hurts. So what do you do about it? In the end, what you do about it is learn. It's not going to happen in a minute. You learn to be comfortable with the uncomfortable thoughts and the uncomfortable emotions that your mind and your heart create. If you can do that, you'll never have another problem for the rest of your life. Because the worst that the world can do is make your mind get uncomfortable. The worst that the world can do is make your heart get uncomfortable. If you are comfortable with your mind and your heart getting uncomfortable, then you don't have a problem. That is what spiritual evolution is. That is what it means to grow spiritually, is that you learn how to be at peace with yourself. You learn how to be whole within yourself. Not that you try to manipulate the world so your mind never creates disturbing thoughts or heart disturbing emotions. You'll never be able to do that. You'll get all screwed up trying to make that happen. You'll blame everybody for everything they did. <laughs> if somebody does something that makes your heart hurt, you blame them. You, I don't like them. You make it hurt worse. You make a big mess. If I were interacting with somebody that make my heart hurt, I sit there and look at it and say, can you handle that? That's the first thing I say anytime my heart ever does anything. Is that okay with you? Is that okay with you that the heart's doing that? When I can say yes, then I can look and see if I need to deal with the other person or something I need to do. 98% of the time, if I can handle it, there's nothing to do about it. A person having a bad day, so give them a break. Or you misunderstood. Have you ever checked it out? You misunderstood. You were sensitive. It had nothing to do with what you were thinking. There was not a reason in the world that your heart hurt. Your heart didn't hurt because the person said. Your heart hurt because your mother did something when you were little, but they said reminded you of that. Therefore, it came up made your heart hurt. Go talk to a psychology. They'll tell you all about it. So if you can learn to handle what is going on inside of you, you become a great being. That's what makes greatness. So first, what I've experienced in growth is it is easier to handle what is going on inside of you if you understand why it did it. If I understand what I just told you, that when I was little, mommy, daddy did this, it left they had feelings inside of me. They've been suppressed down there for 30 years. And all of a sudden, somebody showed up wearing the blouse my mother was wearing when she did it. <laughs> it said that to me, right? And all of a sudden, everything that that person just irritates me. Everything they say just doesn't feel comfortable. If I understand that that's what's going on, that's a lot easier to deal with, isn't it? So this thing about coming to understand your thoughts and understand your emotions, I think is a very, very important part of your spiritual growth. And the fact is, it's easy. And I don't have to sit down. It's not, we're going to now go one by one and talk about your thoughts and emotions and what mommy and daddy did. You can bet I ain't doing that because I know why every single one of your thoughts and every single one of your emotions are the way they are. And every one of you, it is exactly the same reason, not the same thoughts and emotions, but the same reason. The core of what is going on in there is exactly the same for everybody. Whew, that makes it easier, doesn't it? And it can be explained in two minutes. All of it, every bit of it, every bit that ever happened, every bit that's happening, every bit that ever will happen inside of you is that simply. You had experiences in your past, and some of them were not pleasant. And you'd stored those unpleasant experiences inside of you. You don't even know you're doing it. It's like automatic. Because you don't want to experience it, you resist it. When you push it away, you're storing this energy and it gets stored directly, and I mean directly, in your mind and in your heart. And now it becomes like data in a computer. The computer's going to spew out what data it has. Your data has such and such. His data has such and such. Tomorrow your data will have different stuff because you had experiences today. Therefore, your mind will say different things tomorrow than it's saying today. But usually the same thing because there's underlying stuff you store from before, but the little things that happen today cause it. And I'm telling you, I, you're smart enough. I don't need to finish the sentence. That's where your thoughts come from. It is a combination of the stuff you stored from before because you didn't like it. You kept it inside of you. Now the world reminds you of it and it comes back up. Have you noticed that? The stuff doesn't stay quietly in there, does it? It comes back up. This whole thing about like and dislike do you understand that is bulbadash? Very few of you have ever decided what you like and dislike, ever. It gets told to you. It comes up inside of you and it says, I don't like that. I don't trust him. I don't like that. You're not doing that. You didn't decide, I'm going to meet this person at three and I'm not going to like him. 
and I'm not going to trust them. No, you just went there and somehow your mind started saying, I don't like them. I don't trust them. I don't like this job. I thought it'd be right for me, but it's not. Why is it saying that? It's saying that because your last job was a certain way and this reminded you of it or they gave you a supervisor who was similar to when you had three jobs ago or reminded you of your brother and you didn't get along with him very well. The way a guy parted his hair, oh my God, I don't have it. What is happening is the outside world is coming in. It is hitting your stored stuff that you have stored in there. And therefore, it is stimulating the mind to say and the heart to feel different things based upon what you've stored there. That's why your mind says what it says. That's why your thoughts say what they say. If you go to a movie and the movie left an impression on you, I am telling you, the next day, some things will happen that will make you think of the movie, and you will either like what happened or not like what happened because you watched the movie. Somebody had red hair in the movie, and they were the devil and the evil one. Right now, you run into somebody, you have a new, new assistant, and they got red hair. You get, uh, uh, I don't know. And don't kid yourself. It actually happens, doesn't it? You actually form opinions like that. So it is your past experiences that you stored inside of you, most of which you stored the negative ones because you were not comfortable with them. So you didn't want to experience them. Therefore, you pushed them away. It's, it's like Freud talked about suppression or repression, right? You push them away because I don't want them coming all the way in and you store them inside of you. That is why your thoughts say what they say when they say them is because of the impressions that you got stored inside. That's the data. If you ask a computer a question, you're not asking the computer the question. It's a bunch of metal. You don't know nothing. You're asking the data a question. Get any computer you want and put the same data in it. Ask the same question seven million times. It'll give you the same answer. That doesn't mean the answer's right. <laughs> it just means based on the data, that's what's going to come out. You got data in you. She got data in her. And based on that data, your mind is going to have opinions and views and likes and dislikes and preferences and concepts. And oh my God, it's so full of it. It's unbelievable. If you had different experiences, your views would be different. Are you humble enough to understand that? Everyone's views, all these people are marching and big on these, all these beliefs and stuff that they get into, right? All you have to do is change one experience in their life and they're on the other side. You have experiences, you store them inside of you and they determine how you think. It's almost like try to say it. It's so obvious, isn't it? But it seems so obvious, but it's ridiculous. Because what you're saying is if I had a slightly different experience, I'd think different. So how can I be so attached to my thoughts? <laughs> it's just the funniest thing in the world. The same time I was having an experience, how many other experiences were going on I wasn't having? 700 billion zillion. And there's nothing special about the one you were having. It just happened to be the way you were looking at that moment. But I try to get this through to you because we're so caught up in ourselves that we're not willing to let go to see this. You had a traumatic experience when you were young. You were looking out the window and you saw a car accident and it just freaked you out. Now you don't like cars. You don't want to ride. You know, stay at home. You can get weird, can't you? Because of an experience you had 40 years ago. All I'm saying is, there, you developed your whole self-concept every way you are. What blog site you go to and how strongly you blog and what signs you carry when you're marching. All because of that. So you're telling me that if the second before you looked out the window, your little sister called you, hey, Paul, look over here. And so you didn't look out that window. Your whole life is different. That's, that's belittling yourself to a level that's ridiculous. So you sit there and realize, yes, experiences unfold in front of me. I shouldn't be storing them. It doesn't make sense that what happened to you when you were five years old is determining who you want to marry now. Just because you watched a, a movie with Cinderella and there was somebody on a white horse and now somebody rode up on a white horse and your heart's going like this. It does that. Go ask the psychologist. They'll tell you. They'll call your formative years. What does that mean? They formulate what you're going to think, what you're going to feel. Guess what? The yogi doesn't say that with scientific pride. The yogi says, that's ridiculous. That's insulting. I don't want what happened when I was five determining how I feel and how I think now, do you? And so the yogi says, I don't want that stuff inside of me. I want to be present here. I don't need a mind telling me this stuff and creating all this commotion in my heart and so on. I want to be present with the moment that's unfolding. I want to experience it fully. I want it to come all the way in and touch the core of my being without all this noise, this static of my past experiences, judging it, doing all kinds of stuff with it. I want to live every moment of my life fully. 
not have the regurgitated past messing up every moment of my life. And I'm telling you, you are capable of that. Let's get that straight. You're capable of being an awakened, clear being who's present in the moment, fully experiencing what's happening. Then all of a sudden your heart is reacting or interacting with what's actually happening instead of with your reaction to what's happening because of your past. It changes everything. Where do you see how everything changes business, changes relationships, changes every food, it changes everything. You sit down to eat, right? You have a special meal, but it's not the same as it was when you came here two weeks ago. That's why you came back. I, I liked it so much. You're crazy to do that. You should experience the new meal just like you experienced the one two weeks ago. Maybe it's better, but no, it's not going to be for you, is it? Pay attention. You ruin your life by carrying those impressions. In yoga, we call them some scars. Those impressions that got left from your past experiences, they're past experiences. Let them be past experiences. You had them, you went through them, they were either pleasant or not, you grew from them. Now you're present completely for this moment. Wouldn't that be fun? You go on a vacation. The entire vacation, you compare it against the vacation you took last time. No, or wish you had maybe chose something else. In other words, your mind will not let you enjoy the experience you're having because it's too busy comparing it, judging it, fearing it, wanting, etc., etc. So you learn to work with yourself. How do you do this? First, you have to want to. You have to realize this is more important than who you marry. This is more important than your children or whether you have children. This is more important than how much money you have because the reason you marry is to be happy, feel love. This is why you don't feel love all the time. The reason you want money is so you feel you can get things that make you happy, that you experience life. What good is it if your mind's going to bother you about it? All right? So you come in here and you realize it is more important that I learn to work with myself than anything else I will do in my whole life. It's going to determine the quality of my life. So how do you work with yourself? It's not that hard. You just have to want to. You have to want to free yourself from yourself more than you want to get what you think is going to make you okay. I hope this talk helps you realize that getting what you think will make you okay will not make you okay. Avoiding what you think will make you miserable will not make you not miserable. You'll still worry that it may happen again. If you get what you want, you'll worry you'll lose it or you won't even want it anymore. That's so obvious and ridiculous. If you just ate, do you want to eat again? In other words, the very fact that you got it means you don't want it anymore. You want a new car? Get a new car. See whether what you want is a new car anymore. It is a non-win situation. Getting what you want means nothing. Avoiding what you don't want means nothing. What means something is that you're okay inside yourself no matter what's happening. If I get it, fine. It's fun. If I don't get it, that's fun too. I'm fine. I'm whole and complete within myself. It's unconditional. It's not dependent upon anything outside. That's what it means to have a nice life. Now go out and have fun. Knock yourself out. (laughs) Right? It'd be wonderful. So how do you do this? You start by wanting to. That's why I spend so much time talking about that. It's not about a technique. I want to. Pretty amazing what people do when they want to. Right? Even people in trouble, like drug addicts. Go check out what they do to get drugs. Woo! Man, they're pretty ingenuous. When you want something seriously, you're pretty good at it. You need to want to be okay within yourself bad enough that you're willing to do whatever's necessary. In other words, I'm in a relationship and somebody's just done something I don't understand. I feel insecure. My heart is start to hurt. I have two choices. I either go out there and do my normal whatever, (laughs) to try and fix it or check it out or do whatever it is. Or I look at it and say, I want to change my pattern right now. I want to be comfortable with the fact that this is how I'm feeling about this. And you end up working on yourself instead of working on the thing outside. And I'm telling you, you're going to be shocked to find out if you do that, 99% of the time the thing outside takes care of itself. If you will work on yourself, all the rest just smooths out. It's the most amazing thing in the whole world. Versus if you go out there and try to manipulate everything to make your problem be okay, 
everything fights you. Work on yourself and wait till you see what happens outside. That goes for your relationships, goes for business, goes for everything. So you're in business, you like it, you're doing it, the boss comes and criticizes you. And your mind's going crazy, I don't like it, they lashed out, they used to criticize me, I don't like it. You lose your job. Not because the boss criticized you, but because you couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle your emotions. It doesn't matter, right or wrong or anything like that. You couldn't handle it. You work on yourself. You say, I am going to learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable about the criticism. And you start working on that. Next thing you know, your boss feels that you handled that well. And this happens and the whole relationship progresses and your job gets better, whereas you would have quit. It happens in every aspect of your life. So you have to put as the, on the front burner, I want to learn how to be okay with myself. All right. Now, how do you do that? I've taught you before what I found to be the highest technique. I don't know if anybody does. I get letters from all over the world that people do it. So they say, oh my God, it's changed my life. You ready? It's, it doesn't cost any money. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you don't have to write anything down. Don't get a pen. The answer is this. When something happens outside and it causes your heart to do that weird stuff it does, you know, that, that, that weird little thing it does or it gets uncomfortable or your mind starts spewing, right? <laughs> well, it's talk, right? Relax. <sighs> what? Relax. But what do I do about my mind telling me, I don't want to work here anymore, I don't like, relax. But I don't understand, it's saying I don't want to work here anymore, so what? So what? So what your mind is saying, what do I do about this? I'm telling you the answer is relax. What does that mean? It means you in there who is experiencing the disturbed mind, cool it. And then people come to me and say, but it won't. No, 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 you didn't hear me. I didn't tell your mind to cool it. I told you to cool it. I didn't tell your mind to relax. I told you to relax. And so you start catching on that you're in there and you're aware that the mind is disturbed. You who's in there, relax. You're in there noticing, aren't you? You noticed, oh, my, my heart's getting weird. Good, relax. It's the most unnatural thing you will ever do. It's like you're, you want to react. You want to push it away. You don't want to feel it. You want to do something to make it stop. That's what your natural reaction is. And all it's going to do is cause trouble. It just makes it worse, makes it get stronger, it makes you take your mess inside and take it outside, start saying things, doing things that you wish you hadn't. That's what happens. Instead, what you do is you look at it and you say, I need to learn to do this, and you relax. It'll take you some time, but I'm telling you, anyone who's ever tried it, you relax and you're going to find out that you're in there and that you are not your disturbed mind and you are not your disturbed heart. And if you can handle your disturbed mind, you can handle your disturbed heart, guess what happens? It stops being disturbed. What do you mean? It's so funny. You are in there thrashing around your mind, trying to figure out what to do about everything, causing all this commotion. If you stop thrashing, it stops talking. Not right away. It takes time. But when you will learn to settle behind, you are not causing the disturbance in your mind or your heart. And you're going to find out that it ceases. And pretty soon your mind and your heart become much quieter. They become much easier to live with because you are not causing a disturbance about their disturbance. Learn to relax and release. Relax, relax. People say, but what about the outside? Once you are done relaxing, look to see whether there's still something to do with the outside. Because I'm telling you the vast majority of the time, it will have already passed by. Somebody says something to you or they don't say something to you, you start getting all disturbed. Just relax. Breathe, relax, open your eyes now. They're not there anymore. <laughs> they were passing by. A car drives by, right? It cuts you off. There you go. It's perfect. Cut you off. Come, relax, relax. But they were wrong. It doesn't matter. Just relax. Remember, you're practicing being okay with yourself. It's a video game. It's fun. Can you handle yourself? That's the name of the game. <laughs> Instead of Pac-Man or something like that or, or what is it? Grand Theft Auto, all right? Instead of Grand Theft Auto, it's can I handle myself? And you just make it a game. Don't make it some heavy thing. Make it a fun game. You won't be able to do it at first. Of course you won't. You, you weren't able to do calculus the first day you walked in. You were able to play tennis the first time you picked up a racket, were you? You weren't able to play piano the first time you sat down. You just keep working with yourself. There is no way if you work with it, it won't work. Why? Because you're in there. You don't have to react to what your mind is saying. If your mind sits there and says, I don't know, on the morning of your wedding night, 
God, I don't know. This could have been a mistake. You know how many people's minds say that? Don't shh, don't tell anybody. Because it had trouble making the decision. It'll always do something, right? It doesn't matter that it said that. It's not wrong. It's not a problem until you listen to it. Then it's a problem. <laughs> you just like go tell your girlfriend or boyfriend, God, I couldn't believe that I woke up. At no, that's a gross mistake. That's a gross mistake to give it a voice like that. It's just a sick thought. You have insecurities, you have fears, you have trouble making decisions. So it came up and said that. So what? It doesn't mean anything. Are you comfortable letting it go? It doesn't mean anything. And then you'll next thing it'll go and you'll feel all this love for your little buddy booby. All right? And then it's gone. And it's like you handled it. I don't work at you handled it. <laughs> Mazel tough. If you can handle it, it is not a problem. If you can't handle it, it is a problem. And it doesn't even matter what it is. That truth is there. No matter how big it is, if you can handle it, it's not a problem. And no matter how small it is, if you can't handle it, it is a problem. So it's about where I started the talk. Can you learn that you are the problem? And can you handle yourself? And as you handle it, you will cease to be a problem. Things will come and they will go. And you'll start to catch on. It all comes and goes. For how long? 13.8 billion years have been coming and going. This is what I feel about the universe at this time. I haven't been around very long. Of those 13.8 billion years, I wouldn't even, I'm embarrassed to say how few I've been here. And yet the universe exists everywhere, doesn't it? I didn't make it. It did a pretty good job, didn't it? It made itself. It made all you guys. I didn't. It made the trees. It made the planet. It made all the seven, two billion trillion galaxies. <laughs> so I give it an A. An A plus plus. It did one heck of a job. It started, I used to give that talk, it started with the Big Bang with just these clouds of hydrogen gas. And it put them together all by itself to make you? <laughs> to make all of this? I swear, I think it did a pretty good job. So I think it's still doing that. It's still doing the same thing it was doing. I, I don't have to be freaked out over everything. It seems to me it can take care of itself. And I've already challenged you. I don't know how it is that every part you're not experiencing, you're perfectly happy to let it take care of itself. And only the part that's in front of you, you're not okay letting it take care of itself. Something's fishy about that. All right? And this is what it means to relax. And you just start training yourself. It's a very private thing you do inside. Just relax. Well, what if my heart reacts? Relax. Relax. It'll pass. There's not a single emotion you ever had that didn't pass. Everything in this world comes and goes. Let it. And then when events happen and they weren't comfortable to you, let them go. Don't store them inside. I'm not going to sit there and say, if you were mean to me, you're in a bad mood, and you say something to me, and we're in a relationship, and it hits me wrong, I'm not going to keep that inside of me. I don't want that inside of me. I more don't want that inside of me than I want you not to have done it. If I have a choice that, oh, I can make it so you never do it again, or I can make it so I'm okay that you did it, I can handle it and be at peace with it, give you a break, I know which one I'm taking. Because maybe you won't do it again, but he will. I would rather be okay all the time than have to manipulate and control people so that I can be okay. You don't want to make people the way you want them to be so that you feel okay. You want to be okay the way they are. You want to love someone for the way they are, not because of how they treat you. Because otherwise you're out there manipulating and controlling people and you'll never, ever have a good relationship. Not a real relationship. Because you'll know that you have to behave a certain way in order for them to be the way you think you need them to be so that you're okay. Whew, that was a long sentence. But I know every one of you heard me. So it's like I'm giving you the formula for liberation. This is the formula for a beautiful life. This is a formula for being the highest you. Somebody who's always okay. If you just keep practicing and practicing and practicing, you'll know you can handle anything. Then you're free when you know you can handle anything. So you relax and you release. When the past comes up that you didn't handle well before, what happens when mommy and daddy come up and first husband or different things come up? Relax and release. Do the same thing every single moment of your life. Relax and release. Relax and release. And wait till you see the stuff will pass. It'll go. And you'll start to feel this love and joy and there's so much beauty inside of you. All right. So I started by saying you're in there and you have thoughts and emotions in there with you. Good. Learn to be at peace with yourself. Learn to let go and relax. Jai Griff.